Hello, and welcome to Join Our Town. I'm your host, Hope Loftus. Oral health is important for everyone, and especially in our children. Here to talk about that subject is Dr. Chris Strandberg from Hendersonville Dental Care. Thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Let's uh, start out our program by telling me what the biggest challenges that face our children in oral health. Well, you know, cavities, gum disease, and diet are definitely the biggest challenges that every kid's gonna face. Okay. Other things are tooth misalignment, crooked teeth coming in, airway constriction. Um, a lot of children have trouble breathing. Childhood sleep apnea is a problem that's being recognized more and more. Okay. And also a big thing for kids is trauma. You know, they're rough and tumble, going out and playing sports, et cetera. Right. So getting injuries to baby teeth can actually affect adult teeth as well. Okay. What are some of the most common issues that you see children face with um, oral health care? Um, you know, basically not understanding how to take care of one's teeth. Okay. Not everybody gets to go to dental school and learn all the tricks of the trade. Right. So things like just how to brush properly okay. are not necessarily intuitive, mm -hmm. especially to kids. It can be hard to hold the toothbrush and clean your teeth properly. Right. Diet is another thing. I mean, they like to eat soft foods, sweet foods, etc. Mm -hmm. And those are the things they want to eat. They Definitely grow up thinking, sweets, this is what sure. I want, this is what I'm going to eat. Right. And they don't understand how badly that can affect their teeth. Mm -hmm. Even uh, um, young infants who drink from baby bottles, mm -hmm. there's some, a recognized problem called baby bottle syndrome, where really? little babies who get their baby teeth in will be drinking uh, sweet drinks or even milk over the course of hours they'll be sipping on it right. and they can get really bad decay to where all their teeth are breaking off of the gum line. Wow, really? Yeah, and so we highly recommend that babies sip water from their bottles um, and a small treat of juice is good once in a while but parents need to really understand that all that sugar is going to destroy children's teeth. Yes, absolutely. Um, how big of a problem do you see in children as far as cavities and gum disease is concerned? Yeah, well, believe it or not, even in our society today, cavities are a huge problem. Um, cavities are five times more common than asthma in children, in fact. Oh my word. Yeah, 20% uh, of U.S. children aged 2 to 19 have untreated cavities in their mouth right now, okay. even in the United States. and. 59% um, of adolescents, 12 to 19, have had some kind of filling done or had a treated cavity. Okay. So more than half of our kids are getting cavities. Mm -hmm. Cavities are caused by bacteria, and like any other bacteria, it's an infectious disease. Right. So it's actually the number one uh, most common infectious disease in the United States is getting cavities. Wow. In addition. 75% of the U.S. population has some form of gum disease, and that includes our children. So kids with puffy, bleeding gums, I mean, that's all the time, and that's related to both their diet and how well they brush and floss. Okay. Speaking of diet, tell me, how does diet play a role in these diseases? So diet is not only food for us, but food for the bacteria that's on our teeth. When we eat, the bacteria on our teeth also eat that same food, especially starches, carbohydrates, chips, sweet drinks, all those things. All the good stuff. All right? the good stuff. Right. So when they eat it, when they digest it, they spit out acid onto our teeth. And they're living on our teeth and they spit out acid. Well, that acid dissolves our teeth and creates little holes that we call cavities. Okay. So diet is very, very important. It's not just what you eat, however. It's also how many times a day. In fact, I would say oh, that... really? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, in fact, okay. I would say that the number of times a day that you eat is more important than what you eat, exactly. Um, what can we do as parents and guardians to help protect, protect our children's oral health? There's, I would say, three main things that you should do. And it's all based on developing good habits in early childhood. Kids get these baby teeth, which some people think are practice teeth, but they're actually really important. 
But with that time, we do get to practice. Um, number one, you need to actually hold the toothbrush in kids, as I would say, up to six years old and help them brush until they really understand what they're doing and floss as well. Another thing is get them in the habit of eating healthy foods, you know, meats, vegetables, um, nuts, things like that with low starch content, low sugar content, okay. and drinking water. You can still give them treats, but it shouldn't be the main source of their diet. And the last thing is get them comfortable going to the dentist every six months. I can't tell you how many patients I see who are advanced in age that have avoided going to the dentist because of traumatic experiences in childhood. The American um, Association of Pediatric Dentistry recommends children go to the dentist. Their first visit should be either uh, one year old or after six months after their first tooth comes in. So probably much younger than a lot of our viewing audience Definitely. might think. So a year old. I believe the average age is about two and a half. Okay. All right. But by the age of two and a half, kids are already able to be kind of scared and nervous about what's going on, and by then they might already have cavities. So their first visit, it's not going to be a happy visit. We want their first visit to be as happy as possible. So seeing the dentist as a friendly experience right. can get them used to going there and help develop good habits that will avoid them having unhappy visits in the future. Okay. Now, I know you mentioned like snacks and things like that and yeah. making sure that you kind of limit that. What about different sodas? Or where I would normally call it pop, but yeah. I, I, I get made fun of a little bit for that. But what about different sodas? Like if you drink something, does that stay on the teeth like that? That sugar, it actually does stick to the teeth. Even though you swallow most of it, the bacteria are going to be hanging on to it, especially okay. in between the teeth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cavities that you get in between your teeth by drinking those sweet drinks because it kind of bathes every surface of the tooth. Okay. So avoiding sodas with sugar in them is very important. Okay. Now, one thing you also have to remember is even diet soda, you know, they're flavored with phosphoric acid. And that acid also dissolves your teeth. Okay. So it softens your enamel. It softens your teeth. And teeth don't really heal, so that damage is cumulative throughout your lifetime. Okay, it doesn't just go away. Mm -mm. Yeah. And sweet tea is um, also a big problem here, so unsweet tea is preferred. We like the sweet tea in the South. Yeah. <laughs> um, what should a parent use to clean a baby's teeth, starting them out, starting them out young? Um, soft bristle, very small toothbrush with a tiny pea size amount of fluoride toothpaste, and just kind of scrubbing their teeth. That's not going to be too difficult. A lot of times, as children, as babies get older, between three to five, their teeth will start expanding, mm -hmm. and floss is not as important at that time. So um, you can show your kids how to floss mm -hmm. and show them how to brush, and by the time their big teeth start coming in and those spaces start closing again, they'll know what they're supposed to be doing. A moment ago, you mentioned how that our baby teeth are important. Kind of tell me why those baby teeth are important for us to take care of. Because I know you mentioned some people think it's just that, well, they're you know going to lose them later. Yeah. Uh, but what's the importance of that? The importance of it is several fold. Number one, they actually help with jaw growth. They support the space required for the big teeth to come in. Okay. So if those baby teeth fall out, the teeth will shift and the jaw won't grow as much. And that means crowding with adult teeth. That means crowded teeth with adult teeth. So holding space is a very important aspect of baby teeth. Okay. The second thing is speech development. Our T's and V's and F sounds and S sounds are all used, we use our teeth to make all those sounds. Okay. And children who are missing teeth, especially for long periods of time if they're broken down, they've gotten cavities and had to come out, they won't know how to develop those sounds because they're missing those teeth and they'll have lisps. Okay. All right. Another thing is just self-confidence and being able to smile. Um, a lot of times kids will get black things on their teeth or what we call stainless steel crowns, basically like a silver tooth in a kid. And kids are mean, you know, they'll yeah. probably get made fun of. So that's definitely important as well. Um, I would say those are some of the main things. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what about uh, 
thumb sucking for children. Is that, um, is that harmful for children's oral health? Yeah, it is. The way that the baby teeth are going to be moved by that habit also creates the jaw, to, it, it makes the jaw move in that sort of way. So what you'll find is kids who have been sucking their thumb, mm -hmm. they will actually get sort of these big open spaces so they can't bite down. And also their upper jaw will be too narrow, okay. which can also constrict their airway. So basically it forms the shape of their thumb. Whereas we want a big open mouth, a wide smile, those are gonna be more constricted because of that motion. So even sucking the thumb on, uh, with baby teeth causes the big teeth to come in more crooked. Also, it's a bad habit that's a lot of times hard to kick when those big teeth come in. What about, is it the same with a pacifier? Maybe they're not sucking the thumb, but they're sucking on a pacifier. Yeah, it is. And um, fortunately, pacifiers are not, they're easier to control because you can take it away. Right. So, uh, but I, <laughs> I would say that up until the time that they're getting their, you know, about one year old, that's when they need to get rid of the pacifier. Okay. For those same reasons. Um, let's talk a little bit about like sealants for, I, I've heard of children having those sealants put on their teeth. Mm -hmm. What is that and does it help protect their teeth? That's a great question. There is a little bit of controversy today, but I would say that a well-placed sealant that covers up those little micro cracks in the teeth mm -hmm. prevents bacteria from going into those tiny little spaces where the toothbrush brush can't reach. Okay. Now, getting a sealant on your tooth is not going to protect you from getting a cavity for your whole life. In fact, they wear out in about three years or five years. Okay. But the idea is, in those difficult to reach nooks and crannies on the tops of the teeth only, if we seal those over, we can get kids through the hardest times when their diet is not the best and when their ability to take care of their teeth is not the best. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a way to protect their teeth uh, for a short time. and. Some folks, even adults, will have sealants that last, and shoot, they don't have cavities in their teeth, so. <laughs> it helps that, yeah, it helps it, it in does. that area, huh? Mm -hmm. um, how do I know if my child is getting enough fluoride? Well, the community of Hendersonville has the recommended amount by the ADA of one part per million. Basically, it's a very, very low concentration of fluoride in tap water. So if your kids are drinking a good amount of tap water, um, you know, 32 fluid ounces to 80 fluid ounces a day, they are probably going to be getting the right amount of fluoride. The um, Dental Association recommends that if you're getting well water or non-fluoridated community water, then you need to get a fluoride supplement. Okay. But you don't want to have too much and you don't want to have too little. Fluoride makes teeth really strong. It makes enamel protected against that acid that I was talking about. Okay. So your kids are getting enough fluoride if they're not drinking soda, and they're not drinking bottled water, but instead they're drinking tap water. Tap water, mm -hmm. not bottled water. Not bottled really? water. Okay, very yeah. interesting. So um, the community's fluoride levels are controlled by you know, the municipal government, uh -huh. and they're not so much in the bottled water. So bottled water is not gonna provide the same benefits to teeth. Okay. that tap water will. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, stay with us, we have a little bit more to talk about. We'll, we'll be right back after this message. Please stay tuned for more Joy in Our Town. Compulsive eating affects millions of people worldwide. These are just some of the symptoms. If you feel powerless over food and unable to control the way you eat, you're not alone. Overeaters Anonymous can help. Through shared experience, strength, and hope, we provide an effective program and the support you need to stop compulsive eating. For more information about Overeaters Anonymous or to find a meeting in your area, visit our website at oa.org. Welcome to Overeaters Anonymous. Welcome home. Hello, 
Hello and welcome back to Join Our Town. Oral health is an issue we have to be conscious of our entire lives. And here to talk about proper oral health in adults is Dr. Chris Strandberg from Hendersonville Dental Care. Thank you again for being with us, the second segment. My pleasure. We've talked a little bit about children's oral health and now we, we want to kind of get into adult uh, care. So yes. let's talk about what are some of the biggest problems that adults face in oral health care. Absolutely. Well, believe it or not, cavities are still a big problem in adults. Uh, also, dry mouth is a big problem in adults, oral cancer, and gum disease is a very, very big problem that we really haven't been able to control. Why, uh, what causes gum disease? Well, bacteria, as I said before, lives on the teeth. Mm -hmm. It also lives underneath, they also live underneath the gum line, okay? And during a state of health, they don't live too deep underneath the gum, so we can brush them away. But if that's neglected even a little bit, first what happens is the bacteria irritate the gum tissue. And that's when you get bleeding gums. People say, oh well, when I brush my teeth or when I floss my gums bleed. Mm -hmm. Well, that means that your gums are infected and they're really swollen. Okay. So that's a state of disease. If that happens and doesn't get better, doesn't get treated, after a period of time, the bacteria underneath the gum start destroying the bone. Bone holds teeth into place. But the bacteria that sort of hide and grow underneath the gums actually destroy the bone over time. Unfortunately, that is a painless process that most of the time we don't even know is happening. Sometimes the first symptom that you have when you have this bone loss or this severe gum disease mm -hmm. is a loose tooth or a tooth that comes out. Okay. So that is something that needs to be screened by your dental professional and needs to be treated earlier rather than later. Okay. Talking about losing a tooth, mm -hmm. what happens if an adult uh, accidentally, like like an accidental um, problem where they knock out a, t a permanent tooth. What should be done in that case? Well, assuming that you can find the tooth, <laughs> the best thing to do is hold it in your mouth because saliva has antibacterial properties, okay? okay. And it's gonna keep the tooth clean. The next best thing to do if it's someone else's tooth is put it in milk, okay? Really? And it's okay. critical that you get that tooth put back into place within 30 to 60 minutes of it coming out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what the dentist will do is put it back into place and secure it to the teeth next door to keep it from moving. Okay. okay. Now what's gonna happen is the inside of that tooth is probably gonna need a root canal because the nerve is gonna die. But there's still a good chance that the bone and the socket that the tooth came from will reattach. Okay. But the chances of that happening after 60 minutes goes down dramatically. Really? So time is really important. Time is of the essence in that, in that situation. So you could eventually need to get a root canal. However, yes. you've saved... But you saved the tooth. Saved the tooth. Yeah. Okay. And after, if you wait a long period of time, I mean, it's always worth a try, I would say. But uh, what can happen is it just won't reattach. So you might have to look into some other way to replace your tooth at that point. Okay. Tell me, I, I know that um, brushing your teeth is so important. Yeah. Every day. Yes. What about flossing? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, is that really important? <laughs> 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 well, people say, uh, well, you know, I brush twice a day, but I don't floss. I don't need to floss. But really, the way I look at flossing is it's part of brushing. So if you haven't flossed your teeth, you haven't brushed your teeth. Let me just show you as an example yes, on here. Yes, please okay? do. I have a little model of teeth here, okay? So when you're brushing your teeth, you wanna make sure that you're brushing up along the gum line, mm -hmm. okay? In short strokes like this, okay. and pulling down, okay? But think about it. What about those spaces in between the teeth? Right. They're not getting brushed. Let me show you what can happen. So we've brushed the outside, the inside, and the tops of the teeth. Mm -hmm. But if we look on the side of the tooth, that's where cavities develop. Wow, okay. This is actually a really big problem. I would say most of the cavities that, that I treat 
are between the teeth, especially in children in their teens and young adults in their 20s and 30s. Okay. Okay. So let's go over proper flossing. First thing I would say is get a piece that's long enough. Mm -hmm. If it's a really short piece, it's going to strain your fingers, and then it's really uncomfortable. So really make sure you can get a good hold on it. Okay. okay? Now, what is intuitive to do is to stick the floss between the tooth here to remove the debris. Okay. But what is also very important that most people don't do is floss underneath the gum line. Okay. Because in healthy teeth, there's a space there. That's where those bacteria hide from the toothbrush, okay. okay? Especially in between the teeth. This is an area of gum disease. A lot of times people find that this is the area where their gums bleed, and this is a, mo the most common area of bone loss between the teeth. Okay. So how do you prevent it? You get this little piece of floss, and you pull it down, okay? okay. So make sure that you're wrapping the tooth completely and pulling it down that way. Okay. So flossing, not only protects the teeth from getting cavities, but also gum disease. Okay. So very, I recommend fl flossing twice a day. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, how can I tell if my gums are unhealthy? I know you mentioned maybe uh, your gums bleeding. Are there other ways that I can tell that it could be unhealthy? Yeah. Well, if you just look, your gums should have a light pink appearance. And if you see a really red, swollen appearance of your gums, just look up real close and smile. If they look like they're bulging out and rounded, over, uh, overlapping the tooth, that's an unhealthy bit of gum tissue. If you floss your tooth like I showed you and it bleeds, mm -hmm. that's a sign. Okay. It's infected. And you really, your gums should be pretty sturdy. You know, touching them, it shouldn't hurt. Right. So if your gums are kind of tender or throbbing, there's definitely a gum disease issue going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I have a toothache, how important is it for me to see a dentist right away as opposed to just, you know, waiting a while? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Getting a toothache actually means that you've already waited too long. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you're not going to feel a cavity developing until a cavity is very, very advanced because the inside core of the tooth, that's where the nerve is. The bacteria are going to cause your tooth pain. So they have to travel from the outside in. By the time your tooth is hurting, you already need a root canal in most cases. Okay. Okay. So I would say right away because you don't want to get an abscess that gets into your jaw where you can get swelling and a bigger infection going on. So the really important thing is to wait, uh, to not wait until your teeth hurt. Okay. You know, it's, if you wait until your tooth hurts, it's kind of like waiting until you run out of gas on the freeway before you fill up your car. Mm -hmm. By that time, yeah, there's a symptom. Your car has stopped moving, but it's already too late. You're out of gas. Okay. It's already too late in the t case of the tooth okay. to really save it. All right. Um, we've heard a, a little bit more about uh, these days about oral cancer. Mm -hmm. How big of a problem is it, and is it something that we can prevent? There are healthy habits that we can have to minimize the risk that we get oral cancer. Um, every year, I believe about 40,000 Americans are diagnosed with oral cancer, and 8,000 Americans die from oral cancer. Yeah. The unfortunate thing about oral cancer is most of the time that it's caught, it's in its later stages. So the survival rate is really low, sometimes below 25%. Oh, yeah. um, things that you can do to set yourself up for health is avoid excessive alcohol avoid use of tobacco products, okay? And make sure that you're getting an oral cancer screening by your dentist, um, preferably every six months to a year. But you can actually do a little exam at home. Okay. okay. What I like to tell my patients is go home, look in the mirror, open your mouth, stick out your tongue, make funny faces at yourself, but really look at all of your tissues inside. Okay, and what you're looking for is a little white patch or a red patch or a sore or something that just doesn't go away for more than two weeks. Okay. Anything in the mouth should pretty much heal up in about two weeks, and if it takes longer, you should get that checked out. Okay. So self-detection and prevention is really important. You mentioned smoking. What about the use of just tobacco? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely. Well, a lot of folks who use smokeless tobacco inside their lip 
will start getting kind of like a callus okay. where the inside of their gum tissue is real rubbery and leathery. Okay. Okay. That is a lot more likely to turn into a cancer, okay, because okay. those tissues are exposed to all those carcinogens in the tobacco, in the smokeless tobacco. And so doing that, it's common to find areas where people get oral cancer is where they've been holding tobacco in their lip. Really? Mm -hmm. You're like, wow. I remember when I was a kid going to a museum at school and and it showing what it can do to your gums. Yeah. Whenever you, it's it's actually very interesting and yeah. probably something somebody needs to think about quitting yeah. if they're watching the program today. I definitely recommend quitting. Um, what is the best way, just in general, for me to maintain proper oral health? Well, similarly, similarly with children, you wanna make sure that your diet consists of a low amount of starchy, sugary foods. Okay, you wanna be drinking a lot of water, tap water, because tap water contains fluoride. Okay. You wanna be brushing twice a day. You wanna be flossing twice a day, because remember, those two things go together. Right. You wanna be using a fluoride toothpaste, because fluoride makes enamel and makes teeth um, protected against those environmental hazards. You wanna make sure that you're going to get checkups regularly. We recommend every six months, some people it's three months. Um, make sure that your gums are not bleeding and that you have prevention as your mindset rather than getting pain and then treating it. Okay. Dr. Strandberg, thank you so much for being on the program with us today. It's my pleasure, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. We hope you are informed by today's program. Please join us next time for Join Our Town. We'll see you then. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.